What is a surjective function, also sometimes just called a surjection? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. Let's say we've got a function f that maps the set a to the set b. Then, here is our definition of surjective. The function f is surjective, also sometimes called onto, if and only if, for all elements y of the codomain, there exists an element x in the domain such that f of x is equal to y. So all this means is that for a function to be surjective, every element in the codomain must get mapped to by at least one element in the domain. So for a surjective function, you could give me any element y of the codomain, and I could tell you an element x of the domain so that f of x is equal to y. Now let's draw a diagram to get a better idea of what a surjection might look like. On the left, we have our domain A, and on the right, we have our codomain B. So we've got some elements in our domain and our codomain. Let's say that the function f is a surjection, so f is surjective. Since f is surjective, every element of the codomain must get mapped to by at least one element of the domain. So here's an example of a possible surjection from A to B. We see that every element of the codomain is getting mapped to by at least one element of the domain. You might also notice that this element is getting mapped to by two elements of the domain. This is perfectly okay in a surjective function, but it's not okay in a type of function that's called an injection. And if you're not familiar with those, I'd recommend checking out my lesson on the topic. I'll leave a link in the description. But again, for a surjective function, it's totally fine if multiple domain elements map to the same element of the codomain. Remember that the codomain of a function is the set of values that might come out of the function, and the range is the set of values that do come out of the function. So in a surjective function, the codomain is equal to the range. Because under a surjective function, the image of the entire domain is the entire codomain. Let's take a quick look at a concrete example that should help drive this point home. Let's say we've got a function f that maps the real numbers to the real numbers, and f is defined like this. f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. In this case, our codomain is the real numbers. Thus, this function, as it is defined, is not a surjection. Because all of the images of this function, by its definition, are non-negative numbers. But our codomain contains numbers that are negative. So, since not every element of the codomain gets mapped to by this function, it's not a surjection. The range is not equal to the codomain. However, we could make this function a surjection if we slightly changed its definition. Let's just do a little bit of copy and paste, and then change this color to green. To make this function a surjection, we'll change the codomain from the real numbers to the semi-closed interval from zero to positive infinity. Now that we've changed our codomain, this function does map to every element of the codomain, so this function is a surjection. A way to think about surjections is that a surjective function covers the entire codomain, because it maps to every element of the codomain. If a function doesn't cover the entire codomain, so there's some element that doesn't get mapped to, then it's not a surjection. So this, not a surjection, but this is a surjection. Now one last thing before we go, let's quickly take a look at how we might prove a simple function is surjective. Let's say we've got a function f that maps the integers to the integers, and f is defined like this. f of x is equal to x minus 1. Typically, to write a proof that a function is surjective, we begin with some scratch work on the side. By definition, to prove that a function is surjective, we need to show that given any arbitrary element y from the codomain, there exists some element of the domain that maps to y. So we're trying to find the solution to this equation, if it exists, f of x equals y. What domain element x maps to y? If we can show there exists a solution to this equation that is in the domain of f, 
then we'll be able to show that every element of the codomain gets mapped to by some element in the domain. So let's continue and see how that works. For starters, we can do some substitution, substitute x minus 1 in place for f of x. So x minus 1 is equal to y. Then we're trying to solve for x, add 1 to both sides, x equals y plus 1. So this means if we're given the element y from the codomain, the element y plus 1 in the domain maps to y. But is y plus 1 actually in the domain? Is y plus 1 an integer? We know that it is, because y is an integer, 1 is an integer, and the integers are closed under addition. So y plus 1 will always be an integer. So for the proof, this is how it goes. Take an arbitrary element y from the codomain. Then we need to show that the expression we solved for over here is in the domain. In this case, that's very simple. We say then y plus 1 is an element of the integers by closure. And then we just point out that our expression works. Since we've shown that y plus 1 is in the domain, it is an integer, we can plug it into our function. So f of y plus 1, what's that going to be equal to? By definition of the function, it's equal to y plus 1 minus 1, which is equal to y. And that concludes the proof. We can add a closing remark if we want, thus f is surjective. So again, the logic of this proof is that we're saying you can give us any arbitrary element of the codomain, and there will always be this element in the domain that maps to that element of the codomain. Thus, by definition, our function is surjective. Certainly don't expect this little lesson to make you a master at proving functions are surjective, but I hope it's a helpful little glimpse into a simple proof of surjectivity. And I will just leave you with an example problem to try on your own. Let the function f map the reals to the reals, and it's defined like this f of x is equal to 1 half times x cubed plus 5. So is f surjective? Prove your response. Let me know how it goes down in the comments, and I'll leave the solution in the description. So I hope this video helped you understand what surjections are. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. I can hear your voice from all the way up here, dear. Won't you please come to me? You'll have it up here. There's a light where I float that erases all black. It makes everything.